leo basi tumewapata wanawake muhimu wawili ambao watazungumza nanyi kuhusu mambo mengi ambayo wanayafanya na kwa nini wanayafanya kwa muda gani na kwa nini sasa hivi lakini naomba radhi kwa wale ambao mnapenda kusikiliza kipindi hiki kwa lugha ya Kiswahili kwa ni kipindi hiki siku ya leo inakwenda kwa lugha ya Kiingereza Ladies and gentlemen good evening thank you again for watching Mimi na Tanzania today we are the studio it's me Hoy Stemu I have special women today at the studio with me from different walks of life but they represent the women in this world with different characters and different focus in the world i will not waste your time follow me and i would like to introduce them one with i uh, start with ruby boya for most women in this country must know her at one point or another she's an ambassador she's an ambassador against hunger for wfp in south africa world food program uh, we have a World Food Program in Tanzania, so as well in South Africa, and she's an ambassador in South Africa. Lubi, thanks very much for coming and joining us Thank today. you so much. With me, I have Shaili Basnet, who is uh, one of the phenomenal women in this world. She comes from Nepal. She is among of the uh, seven Nepalese women who are, have climbed Mount Everest, the, the highest mountain in the world, and Mount Kilimanjaro as well, and they were together with her, Lou Mimboya and these other women. So she's here to represent other women who have climbed the mountain. Welcome, Shelley. Thank you. And congratulations for what you have done, both of you. Thank you very much. Uh, going back to Lubi, uh, I'm sure the face is familiar. She is an act. She was an actress at uh, Isidingo. Uh, and uh, on international films and also on Kilimanjaro mountain climbing, she was part and parcel of it. I will let them talk about their backgrounds more than that. Um, starting on my far right, uh, Luby, people want to know, who is this Luby? <laughs> who is she? Well, I'm an actress and I'm an activist. I'm a humanitarian. I'm a philanthropist and I'm a lover of life. Lovely. <laughs> wow. Shaili. Tell me, if I said this, uh, there's a woman called Shaili. Who is this Shaili? Shaili Basnet is a woman from Nepal, a lovely, lovely country. And she's a person who's just living life to the fullest. And in the meantime, spreading out a me message that is meaningful to many more in the world. Tell me, why, why this time? Why this time at this juncture that you, both of you, uh, we women from Nepal, decided to come and climb Mount, uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. What is the purpose behind? We actually wanted to climb this mountain long ago, but Kilimanjaro made us wait for more than two years. Our team is in a mission to climb the highest mountain in each continent. We climbed Everest in 2008. Mm -hmm. After that, we climbed Mount Kojiasko and Mount Elbrus, which are the highest in Australia and Europe in 2010. So we are done with three mountains, and we wanted to climb Kilimanjaro next since 2010. And we waited, and we waited, and we worked, and we struggled, and faced many challenges. And finally, we're here. And I think all this wait has been worth it, because this time, it was not just the seven of us climbing. We had sisters like Kluby and sisters from Tanzania climbing together with us. So how many women climbed the mountain in Kilimanjaro? We're seven Nepali women, mm -hmm. three Tanzanian women, including one from Hazabe tribe, Anna Filippo. And mm -hmm. then we have a friend from Dar es Salaam, Ashura, and another friend, Nima, who climbed together with us. And then we, of course, had Kluby with us. OK. What, what was the? What what was uh, what is the is the purpose? Tell me, you're, you're traveling all over the world trying to climb. What message are you trying to convey to the to the country, to the country, to the world, and to the people of that certain country that you're climbing the mountain? The basic message, we being a women's team, is that we women are human beings. Mm -hmm. When you look at a person, do you think if it's a man or a woman? If you think, don't think that, because mountain makes no difference. Mm -hmm. We're a team of women going from one mountain to another, and we can do it. And if a group of women from a country called Nepal, which a lot of people haven't even heard about, can do this, then any woman in this world can live her dreams, can be most ambitious. 
And what we really want to share to everybody when we're in this journey is that if you want a woman to become a full human being, send her to school. Mm. That's the first thing. So with our climb, we focus on three things, education, empowerment, and environment. And we think education is the first key that you can give to any child to become the best of what he or she can become. Mm. Perfect. I love that. I love that. Uh, I mean, what more can I say? What more can I say? Uh, some of the newspapers and the media <laughs> channel, the social media today, uh, given it's an interna international, international Women's Day, and here nationally, basically the ministry is really focusing on supporting women. And you said it right, that uh, educating a child, it's a very important um, thing. Yeah. Congratulations uh, to you. all of you. Lubi, mm -hmm. is it your first time? to climb the mountain? Absolutely. First time Kilimanjaro or Kil mountain in general? A little bit of mountain, <laughs> but definitely Kilimanjaro. Uh -huh. It was one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. It was tough, it was thrilling, it was exhilarating, but I had the backing and the support and the compassion and the expertise of these seven Nepali women and of course my three African sisters. What do, you th what do you think was, uh, was your strength as you were climbing? What, were, where, what are the strengths that you really are proud of? That I'm, the I, teamwork I, you or know what? what she, I know what she will say, but this is for me that I do not give up. I'm a warrior and I'm a fighter. And the mountain broke me not once, not <laughs> twice. But I got up again and I didn't surrender and I made it to Uhuru Peak. So it's about never fearing failure. It's about having a teachable spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's about having positive thoughts. You know, constant being a positive frame of mind and anything is possible. Women are watching and exemplary women like you are sitting and uh, we're talking to them. They want to know what exactly, what are the motivations, live alone climbing mountain. Mountain climbing is, is one of the main, of the big example now we are talking about. But what are the issues that women would like, you'd like to leave a message to the women of this country who are listening this uh, interview right now? For me, like I said, it's all about education, empowerment, and environment. Anything, any change has to happen with education. You cannot provide somebody, you cannot keep anyone away from education and expect them to do miracles. There'll be some people who are very strong willpower and make something out for themselves. But if you want a change in the society, if you want a healthy society, while the women of the society are being threatened or are not being allowed to develop, that society will never thrive. That society can never be fully developed. So the first step that our team really believes in is education. And Second is empowerment. Sometimes, after education, what do you do? You know, if I have to live on somebody else's merit, somebody else's uh, blessing, then I can never become full shyly wasnet. You know, I have to be empowered, and that is what is going to take me ahead. So, to all the women in the world, you know, my message is my experience my lesson that the mountain has taught me and that is education and empowerment and the reason we say environment is because environment is not what is around us environment is what we are made of we're product of the environment so if you look down at me then you are also a part of that environment so as a whole if we want this world to be of a better environment we better look at each other as equals mm then we'll all be more powerful. Yeah, Ruby, what, 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 what message do you think you should uh, convey to the women who are watching and listening? Now? As a uh, United Nations World Food Program ambassador against hunger, the World Food Program has instilled across the country, across the continent, especially right here in Tanzania, the school feeding schemes. And as Shaili said, within these school feeding schemes, they lure 
you know, communities who would otherwise not have put their kids into school, especially the young girls, because of lack of money to put them in schools, because they get pregnant young, because they get married young. So they lure these families by feeding them, you know, by feeding the children to children while they're still in school. As one, as everybody knows, you can never feed a hungry child. So by feeding the kids while they're still at school, you know, the kids can complete their education. And, you know, as Charlie said, and as I believe, you have to become our own heroes as women. I, I believe in mentorship. I'm a big fan of mentorship. And I believe it's my duty and it's an honor and it's a privilege not only to be blessed, but to be blessing to other females in this country. I would take you back a bit uh, on issues of girls, uh, issues facing girls in the world. And I would like Shelley to talk uh, with experience of Asia will be experience of Africa and then take us specifically to Nepal, to Nepal and then you take us to South Africa and then let's compare this situation in a country like Tanzania. What, what can we learn from your countries or your continent or your, your country's continent we are from the same place but uh, mm -hmm. what can we learn that we see uh, even girls here are facing the same issues but what can be done better that we, we help all of them not only one part of the continent. Mm -hmm. Shaili. I think the first thing that comes to my mind when you ask me this question is that one thing we all have to understand is that we may be different size, shape, color, caste, creed, background, but when you're a woman, no matter which continent you are in, chances are likely that you'll be facing similar challenges. You could be from Nepal, you could be from Tanzania, you could be from South Africa, you could be from Australia, you could be from United States. You know, to what extent you face these challenges, that might be different. Mm. But the kind of challenges that we experience across continents tend to be similar is what we have experienced in the four continents that we've been. And education is one of the challenges, even in the US, even in the most developed countries. Domestic violence is a challenge, even in the most developed country and the least developed countries. So the challenges are not much different. And the solution, I don't think, are much different either. The way we interpret them in our microcosm mm -hmm. sometimes makes it feel like, oh, I'm a Nepali. My case is different from a woman in Africa. Mm -hmm. My case is different from a woman in the US. That's what we think. But if you look at the bigger picture, is the experience I have gained. We're all facing similar challenges. That is one basic thing I've learned. Now, how do we go about it? I've said it enough times, education is the first thing. If you ask me what else, then it's coming together. Mm. It's sticking together for mm. each other. Mm. If you're jealous of my success, then you will never become bigger than me. Mm. And if I think you're too low to learn from, mm. I'll never be shyly plus one. Mm. So that hesitation, that resistance, oh, she's done so well. She could, she's my competitor. Mm. Oh, he's so good. I can never be as good. We need to get out of that mindset. Mm. Women anywhere in the world. Mm. We do what we have to do with confidence, with our 100% effort, we'll get wherever we are setting our eyes on. That is what everyone has to understand. Wow. You see, the world now is like uh, a village. It's a global world. It's Absolutely. a global village. It's like Absolutely. we are... What, whatever problem you have, I have. Absolutely. Ruby, tell us about uh, South Africa, the problems uh, that the girls are facing and how do you relate I, I, to the world? I, I say this so much of late is that there's been a lot of brutality, there's been a lot of domestic violence, there's been a lot of abuse of young women in South Africa over the past couple of years to an extent that it is um, a, a very bad energy. And... Um, what has been going on in my country, which has been so great and I've been part of it and been able to impart that knowledge is that women are rising together. We're saying that enough is enough, that we've got to stop this violence and only we can do it as women. You know, and I love the fact that when I'm seeing younger girls finding themselves in this movement because their sisters or their mothers have been subjected to this kind of violence. and. It's something that we can do together as women to change it immediately, you know, and um, I believe in strength in numbers 
and I and I believe in uh, the power of positive thoughts, as I said. And it's about putting thoughts into actions as well. It's all good and well, you know, walking the walk, but you've got to talk the talk as well. Ah, great. I was I, I, I was reading a statistic somewhere says that sixty percent over sixty percent of women in the world are the ones who are producing and the production areas, especially in agriculture, in countries where agriculture is taking place. But they don't benefit, they don't even get the 10% of what they produce. What, what is that? What, am I, I thought it was only myself understanding another mm. language there. What is your take as women? What do you think can be done there? You know what I think? Today's world more or less is a patriarchal world. You know, and when we say that, I was sharing this with Luby and other friends as well, you know. So that does not that does not mean that only men are victimizing men. You know, there are sometimes women who think that them being victimized is fine. Mm. I have read research where women in villages, some villages in my country have said that it is fine if my husband beats me if I overcook food. You know, I have read in some places in Africa, they think that if your husband does not beat you, then he doesn't love you, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not that this, this male domination thinking is only propagated by men, but it is instilled, instilled so deeply inside women as well that they're doing all the hard work, mm. that they're going through all the pain, they're being victimized, and they think they're fine. Mm. So the solution, I think, is getting out of it. You know, the solution, I think, is so simple for everyone to understand that women are human beings. And we have the right to be treated as one. You're right. But do you think awareness has been given justice to this? It has to start somewhere. You has, know it, what? Has, start, has it started? It has to start somewhere. And I think that, well, let me tell you, in South Africa, there's a lot of awareness. I'm part of a lot of charity organizations, women's group, NGOs, from schools, high schools, primary schools to varsities. So I'm, I, I'm at every age group possible, you know, I'm empowering, inspiring, learning, being taught, um, I'm just feeding off each other, finding solutions to these problems, saying that enough is enough, that we will not stand for any more abuse and violence against women, that, you know, the brutal raping of women is just, it, it's, it, it's not going to happen anymore. And um, I, I just find that um, it's important to have uh, prevention, you know what I mean? And just to start solutions that um, allow us to be in control of our own destinies. And I think that somewhere along the line, we've just lost touch that we can actually um, have control over our own futures and have power over our own futures. They say charity begins at home. Like Absolutely. women, we have to love, to have to support, we have to like each other, right? But uh, there is also, uh, it's a complaint or it's just a gossip, but it's, it is said that it's repeated many times by us women, by even other colleagues to women, saying that when women are in power, they don't give much support to other women who are the juniors in mm. the professional world or anywhere. When they succeed, they just leave others. What's your take on that? See, like I said, treat women as human beings. Don't you see males like that? You know, when we entered the mountaineering industry, there were so few women, and we were very, you know, cautious. Are the other women going to be jealous or this or that? And when we look at the world industry, you know, in any industry, there are men working against men. There are men pulling men's leg. Nobody talks about it. Maybe there's one woman who pulls somebody else's leg and then everybody's talking about it. Mm. You know, the male world is not all white and pure and beautiful and, you know, it's not. It's not fair and balanced. So if you see some imbalances in women's world, people make a big issue out of it. That is one thing. The other thing is, I think, insecurity that women have. Like, I've worked so much, I've struggled so much to be here. If, if there's another woman, maybe she'll take up my position. Maybe that insecurity makes women, okay, let her be where she is. But I'll tell you what, we're seven women mm -hmm. from Nepal, mm -hmm. and the only reason I am able to climb from one mountain to another is because I'm in a team of women. My friends have lifted me from one mountain to another mountain, in spirit, in reality. 
And if there are any women out there who are thinking if somebody else's progress is going to harm me, let me tell you, come and talk to me. Come and take a look at my team. And my team, when I say my team, today it's not the seven of us. We have African sisters with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask Luby, ask Anna, ask Asura, ask Nima, how would have they felt if they were climbing that mountain alone by themselves? Mm. And what is the difference when 10, 12 women are climbing together? There's a big difference. So, so if, powerful. If somebody, if there is some woman out there, you know, not letting other women progress, she's causing a big loss, big loss to herself, wow. no one else. So let's talk about uh, HIV and AIDS mm. in, um, in the world. Let's start with you, Luby. HIV and AIDS in Africa and the way it impacts women affairs. Mm. I do a lot of HIV AIDS work and my biggest uh, message and my biggest stance and what I, I really try to do on a daily basis through having been playing an HIV positive character for over a decade and after Isidingo is to demystify and to destigmatize the disease because there's so many myths and if you do this, you won't get that. And if you do that, you won't get this. So first, we've just got to make it clear what HIV AIDS is and that it's not a death sentence anymore and that it can be curable and that you need a good, strong, solid support system, you know, and you can live a positive life. And yes, you may be affected by HIV AIDS, but you don't have to be infected by it. So those, that's my life's work. Um, when it comes to women and that, and I deal a lot with young teenage girls, I find that these girls have got apathy and in a sense of denial because their friends, their communities, their school friends, they've had a, a big sense of loss because of HIV AIDS in their lives. So they don't see a future that is theirs anymore. And I come into the picture saying, take back what is rightfully yours. Take back the future that you want. You know, be successful, be proud, you know, be the woman that you want to be. And you can overcome a lot of stuff. And that's where I'm coming from when it comes to HIV AIDS. If I remember right, there was a time, I don't know, you were playing as a victim. Is that right? On uh, Isidingo. On um, Isidingo, yes. How, how, let's go back now, you're playing, right? Yeah. But you go out there, there's a real life somewhere. Absolutely. How, were, how was the community taking you? You know what? <laughs> that role changed my life. I mean, it, it, it was great as an, for an artist to play that role, but it changed my life because you know what? I changed people's lives. I, I believe that the writers of that show wanted to really instill a message of hope. It was for socio-economical reasons because it was getting out of control. Isidingo is a, a drama series which de deals with everyday, gritty, grimy Johannesburg streets that everybody can connect to and everyone can, can identify with. So it's very important that we show the real deal. And we did, and people loved the fact that we were so real about it. And that I came out as a messenger of hope. That Unan Deepa, yes, she was HIV positive, but with her ARVs, she succeeded in life. She became not only a maid, she had her own television show. She got married, she wanted to start a family. The possibilities were endless. And I love the fact that I can go and that's why the World Food Program has been so instrumental in my charity because through them I've been able to travel my continent and be a, a, a tool and give people the tools to be able to live positive lives. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm proud of myself and I want to continue that, that, that good work. Before I, I close, uh, Shelley, you're given a chance to meet the Minister of Education in this country. What will be your message? I do not have a lot of knowledge and information about the particular details of the education in this country. But I do know that there are a lot of similarities between the education system in Nepal and in Tanzania. I know Tanzania has done an amazing job in getting students enrolled in the school. And the problem you face after that is so similar in Nepal and Tanzania. We have lots of students in the school, but we don't have increasing number of benches, desks, teachers, textbooks, pencil. And because of that, after a certain class, students drop out. And if there are students dropping out, 
it is always the girls who are bigger in number. Mm. So I would like to tell if, if the government here is listening to me and even to my own government, build infrastructure, build system, whatever you have to invest, invest to ensure that you do not just get students to school, but you keep them for at least 12, 14, 16 years. Mm -hmm. After that, you'll be proud of your investment. After that, we'd have built a different nation. Shaili, I know the women are listening and are really uh, want, they want to hear from you the message to the youth in this country. They want to be somebody, but they feel there are a lot of obstacles in front of them. But through your example, the real life, what, what is your message to the youth in this country? Never ever lose sight of your goals. Visualize your success. If you can dream it, you can do it. Make friends with your challenges. She's climbed and conquered Everest. I've climbed and conquered Kilimanjaro. Those are metaphors to life. Give yourself opportunities that you can take and grab every single moment. And never, ever, ever give up. Wow, these are two women. I just, I want to keep talking to them, <laughs> but uh, it's just, um, but I'm sure women like uh, myself here, climbing mountain three or four times and fail to reach the peak. Definitely I would like to ask, what are the techniques these women have used to climb up there? Shaili, tell us, you got in there, Everest, yeah. yes, Kilimanjaro, yes. Oh, While well, Kluvi was uh, huh? talking, I was thinking, you know, <laughs> I was how powerful her message is. And at the same time, I was thinking, you know, the number of times we almost broke down, <laughs> the number of times we cried, <laughs> the number of times we oh, felt... Oh, so you cried. We, yeah, we cried. We cried. There were, in the last two and a half years that we were struggling to put this climb together. My team, we have cried so many times. There have been times when we've been so frustrated, depressed, and discouraged. So when you have a dream, it's not that you have to be so powerful that you never feel low. Mm. When you're a human being, you mm. will break down. Mm. You will have to sit down and cry. You will feel frustrated. You will think that the whole world is against you. But it is rising back after that. Absolutely. And not just philosophically. Go out and fill up that form that you have to. Go out and talk to this person that you have to. Do it. Take steps. Make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fine that you feel frustrated and low at times. Mm -hmm. That is life. That is how life will treat you. And that is what mountain teaches you. You go there three times, four times, and you cannot do it. You see other people going first time and they climb it. You know, that's the lesson mountain is trying to teach you, is you have to do it right. There will be lows, but you have to get past that. It is fine to be low, but what you have to do is, after that, what do you do? You have a bad headache. You start vomiting in the mountain. What do you do after that? The mountain will always be there. You tell the mountain, sorry, I'll be here next time. Next time, look at the mistakes you made. And one of the things mountains really teaches you from the very beginning is to take one step at a time. Mountain is not a fun park. You cannot go straight to the top. You know, the oxygen level decreases, which means you have to increase to the level of the mountain. And you have to give your body that time. And you have to let the mountain work inside you. That's why you have to take it slow but steady. You have to keep going, and then you'll get there. Whether it is Everest, whether it is Kilimanjaro, or any other mountain in your life, real or metaphorical. Will you both climb Mount Kilimanjaro again if it happens? that you have to? I would love to. De sure. With her, I'll do anything. With her, With her I'll so, do anything. It's women power, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much for a really good uh, interaction. And you're representing the real women of this world. And keep it up. We are following you. Awesome. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mimina Tanzania. And it has come to the end of the show today. We have had these phenomenal women. They are representing the majority of women in this world. They have said it. We have heard it. I am not going to comment. I wish them all the best. And it's me and you to make sure we walk the talk. It's me and you that we support each other to the top. As they supported each other to the mountain top of Mount Kilimanjaro, Uhuru Peak. Let me wish you a good evening. Follow us on the website, Mimina Tanzania, our Facebook, Mimina Tanzania, and Twitter as well. Send your comments. Have a good evening. Go ahead.